Okay. Hello, good morning. Turn the volume down. Sure, that's okay. <clears throat> All right, all right. Oh, good. It looks like most people got the memo of the time change. Sorry for that last minute change, but I figured even if I was doing yoga by myself, you could go back and watch it later, you know? So I figured rather than cancel it completely, we'll just move it earlier and see what happens. So I'm glad a few of you could join. We're gonna get started in about 30 seconds, so make sure you're set up. Today's class is gonna be like um, like an Ashtanga remix class. Um, I'm calling it power yoga just cause, you know, we'll just see what happens. It'll be more like a power flow, more like an Ashtanga class. So um, hopefully you enjoy. We haven't done one of those on Friday in a while. <clears throat> Oh, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and begin, guys. We'll start off in child's pose all together here. <clears throat> Take the knees as wide as you need them to be, big toes can touch. And then just notice how you want your arms to be, whether they want to really soften, whether you want to stretch them out. It's so important to remember in these yoga postures that they can be done so many different ways. So there's never like one proper way, one right way to do anything. There's just different variations that are beneficial for different reasons. So try not to ever get stuck in your yoga practice thinking, oh, I have to do the posture that same way every single time. It's always going to be different and it always should be different, just depending on how you feel. Notice how your breath is today, if it's shallow, if it's deep. You can just let it be for the first few moments as you observe your body here. And if you haven't already, you can allow your eyes to close. And in yoga, you have the opportunity to settle into something much more subtle, something much deeper. So not what we can see on the surface layer of the skin or outside of ourselves, but really starting to tune in to some of those things that we can't quite see. So these could be the thoughts, right, that are in the head, noticing what kind of thoughts are there, the quality of your thoughts, if they're happy thoughts or negative thoughts. And then trying to feel maybe the energy level, any kind of vibrations, any tingling, and any kind of sensations in your body. So it's much more subtle. And whatever you come up with, you come up with. You don't have to try too hard. And then for the next 50, 55 minutes or so, just allow yourself to take it one breath at a time. So full deep breath in here, inhaling. And open your mouth, exhale and sigh the air out into the mat. Inhale like that again. And then open your mouth, exhale, let it go right into the mat. And then we'll rise up together here. 
Just giving the nose a little bit more room to breathe. On the inhale, start to arch the back, look up towards the sky, open up, breathing in. And then exhale, round and curl your spine. Draw everything on that front side up and in. Inhaling, open up, arch and release. Exhale, pull and draw, navel to spine as you round and curl. Doing this a couple more times. Inhaling and exhaling. And you're just kind of feeling warming up your back, your spine. Great warm up to the shoulders. Starting to put a little pressure and energy down into the wrist. Feel all five of your fingertips rooting down and gripping them out as well. Finish up another round there, nice and simple. And then we'll meet up in the center. Start to slide the toes under. Lift your hips nice and high. Downward facing dog. You can take a few moments here to adjust. So if the feet are too close to the hands, walk it out a little. The feet are too far away from the hands, walk it in a little. You want to find that space where it's not too close, not too far. The hips are nice and high. And the heels are striving for the mat. They don't have to be touching. Now see if you're down dog, if you can lift all 10 of your toes up and start to really engage the front side of your legs, lifting your kneecaps and squeezing your quads. You'll feel that nice long stretch through the backs of your legs. Nice openness to the spine there, and some strength right in your low belly as you hug it up and in. And then on your next inhale, we'll move forward, high plank pose. Good, keep the belly up and in as you exhale, lower halfway to chaturanga. You can lower the knees if you'd like. And then on that inhale, roll into your up dog, shoulders back, chin can lift. And then exhale over your toes, downward facing dog. It's a nice easy vinyasa to see what we're working with this morning. See how you feel, any soreness. Maybe the body's really ready and open and feeling strong. Maybe it's feeling sluggish. Whatever it is, just see and observe. And then we're gonna rise up high to the toes. Take a little walk to the hands. Inhale, lengthen halfway. And then exhale, forward fold. Bring it in for a couple breaths. So just observing the energy in your feet from heels all the way to your toes. A lot of the times all that weight is back in the heel. So see if you can try to move your hips forward a little bit more over your ankles. And then try to draw the front ribs in as you tuck your chin. Awesome. Inhale. Let's stand all the way up, arms to the sky. Exhale. We'll take a side bend, right? Just because it feels good. Keep the ribs up. Keep the leg as you inhale. Reach up. And then exhale over to the left. On uh, your inhale back to the center, let's look up towards the thumbs. Exhale, forward fold, take a nice dive all the way. Good. And then inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back, high to low push up. You can go through your vinyasa flow here, chaturanga. Rolling through your back, and inhale up. And then exhale over the toes, hips nice and high. Downward facing dog. Three powerful breaths today. So just keeping a nice rhythm, but also giving ourselves time in down dog. It's really important to help the body open up, help your mind settle, and to come back to that smooth and rhythmic breath. So you never want to rush your time in downward facing dog. And then when it feels right, you'll rise up high, tippy toes, exhale to walk. You can start to jump right up to the top. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, heart to thighs, bring it in. And then on that inhale, let's rise, hands to the sky. Good, exhale, side bend, right. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, tip to your left. Big inhale to the center, reach up. Exhale, forward fold, and dive it in all the way down towards your shins. Inhale, halfway, and then exhale, step back. Go ahead, strong yoga push-up right here. Inhale into that upward, and then exhale over the toes, downward facing dog. Full body breathing now. So try to get that breath rippling all the way through your body from hands to feet. Just feel the lungs filling and emptying, ribs expanding and contracting. And then we're going to rise up high, tippy toes, walk or float. Top of your mat, inhale, lengthen. 
And then exhale, fold. Inhale, one more round, just warming it up. Exhale, side bend right. Inhale, let the breath be maybe the most powerful that it's been this whole time. Inhale, reach up. And then exhale, fold in. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step back, high plank to low. Roll forward, shoulder blades down the back. And then exhale, sitting bones to the sky. Nice and high there. Start to lift your right leg up for three-legged dog. If it feels good, you can start to open that hip slightly, really reach through your toes. Push down through both hands even. And try to keep your shoulders pretty even as well. If you notice that left side started to dip down, try to lift that left side up in line with the right. And then take a nice slow knee to nose. So exhale, round curl, pull belly to spine. Bring it in and then inhale, take it back up to the sky. Expand and extend. And then exhale, light knee to nose. Bring it in and then step your foot right up towards that right thumb. Bring your back knee down to the mat. Inhale, coming up to low. Crescent moon, Anjane Asana. Starting to warm up the hips here. Feel a little bit of weight move down towards the right heel. Keep some pressure in your left big toe, pushing it down into the mat. And then find a little length from your side waist all the way up to your thumbs, your fingertips, lifting your chin. Maybe you're looking up. Everybody's breathing in. Relax the front side of your left hip a little bit more, right? Not going too far too soon. And then exhale, half seated splits. Fingertips are down. So you can keep your hips elevated. Just get to a point where the front leg straightens, flex your front foot, and start to bring your head towards your knee. Strong breathing, feel the sensations, pull your toes back a little bit more. You might activate some length in your calf, so feel what you're feeling. And then we're gonna crawl it forward, top of a push-up, high plank pose. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, upward. And then exhale. Downward. Set up those hands nice and strong. Start to lift your left leg to the sky. Three-legged dog. Hold it high. Keep that right shoulder in line with the left. So try not to dip down on the right side. And then exhale. Bring knee towards nose. Nice and slow. Inhale. Lift it up. Good. And then you're going to exhale. Bring knee to nose. But this time, take the left foot towards the left thumb. Replace it. Drop the back knee down. Good. Low press. Find that beautiful C shape as best you can. Keeping weight in the right big toe. So that foot is actually pushing down, like you're trying to push the floor away with the top of your foot and your toes back there. And then allow your front toes to spread and the weight to sink forward and down into your left heel. Good, keep a little tone, a little tightness to your low belly, a little tightness and lift to your pelvic floor. And then from your side waist, all the way up to the fingertips, there's that little leg and a little bit of a reach back that creates that C from fingertips all the way to toes, that crescent moon shape. Take one more full inhalation. Good, and then exhale, slowly take it back until that front leg straightens. Relax your left toes and bow your right shoulder towards your left knee. You might notice one side's a little bit tighter than the other, right? My left side is like, nope, you know? So you just gotta breathe with it. And it's very, very normal to have sides that do not feel the same. Just keep focusing on your breath. And then we're gonna walk it forward, high plank pose. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale into that upward. And then exhale over your toes. Downward facing dog. Let's just come back to our kind of neutral spine, neutral mind. In and out through the nose. Make sure the breath is even there. Just a little bit more pull back with those hips. A little bit more weight down into your heels. Take one more inhalation. 
And then exhale, look forward, walk or float. Feet to hands, inhale, lengthen out. And then exhale, bring it in, bend the knees now. So big toes are gonna stay together, knees are gonna stay together, come into your chair pose. Inner thighs are squeezing in, lower belly is rising up, and those thigh bones are gonna sink down and back. So you're really getting into this chair today. Arms are extended up. If it's all right on your shoulders, maybe the biceps are just hovering right alongside the ears, so it's alongside the head. If it's too much, you just take it forward a little bit, okay? Now if the neck is all right, you'll lift your chin, you'll look up. Maybe some of you take palms together. But try to sink down into your chair. We wanna build some heat today. Nice and slow, slow burn, right? Slow build, but strong nonetheless. Take one more full inhalation. Good, and then exhale, straight legs, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step back, high to low. Inhaling, upward facing. Good, and then exhale, downward facing. Take the right toes to the sky. And then exhale, bring me the nose. And just a teeny bit quicker, inhale, lift. And then exhale, knee to nose to step your foot through. Keep your back knee lifted and come into high crescent this time. Inhale. Good. Now feel just this slight pull of that right hip back and then draw your inner thighs together. Sink down into your front thigh with that squeeze. Good. Steady belly. Keep it in. Keep it rising. Keep your breath expanding. If you maybe sink just a little bit deeper. The front of that left thigh is probably going to tell you how deep you can go. So pay attention to it. Awesome. And then exhale, fingertips are going to come down from the foot. Hop that back foot up just a little bit, maybe like a foot or so. And then start to pull that right hip back again, straighten your leg, preparing for a pyramid pose. As you exhale, fold your chin towards your shin. So for this pyramid, keep fingertips down. You can look at your big toe. So you're keeping a little bit of length through your back. Awesome. And then just kind of notice there's this big tendency for that right hip to swing way out. You gotta push it back in space. Even if your front knee bends a little bit, totally fine. Good, and then from there, hop the back foot back. Step the other foot back, take a vinyasa, high to low. Just nice and easy. Two postures, left toes lift to the sky, and then exhale, bring knee to notes. Just firing out this first part, inhale, lift, and then exhale, step through. Good, rise all the way up into your high crescent this time. Just kind of feel the weight, especially on those back toes. Right, you can kind of rock the weight back, you can rock the weight forward. It feels like the heel is going back and forth. Right, maybe the heel just kind of finds that middle place over the toes. Hug your inner thighs in and sink lower into your left thigh. Really allow yourself to go there. It's one of the things I love about yoga. We have to keep reminding ourselves and give ourselves permission, I should say, give ourselves permission to go further. The same thing applies in life. It's like we have so much more potential, we just have to give ourselves a permission to go there. Take one more inhalation. And then exhale, fingertips come down. Back foot is going to scoot up just a little bit. Straighten out the left leg. Pull your left hip back, even it out. And then with your next exhale, take a little dip in, looking towards your big toe. So the goal is not to get head to the knee and swish Right, it might happen for you. Fantastic. But you just wanna feel something. So notice what you're feeling here. Keep breathing. Maybe dip those right ribs down towards the left shin a little bit more. So there's like this subtle, subtle, subtle twist. And then with your hands down, slide the right foot back. Step the left foot back, take your vinyasa high to low. Good, keep rolling there all the way to down dog. 
Keep breathing. Come back to your balance. Let everything go up until this point. Let go of any anticipation of what's next. And just practice your yoga, being here. Breathing, one breath at a time, one more. And then we're gonna rise up high to the toes. Exhale, walk or float. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, fold. Bend the knees, chair pose. Inhaling, reach up, sitting low, pull your thighs back. Take a few breaths here. We're gonna add a little variation, so just get into the feet. Get into the chair, and then arms are gonna swing back. Shoulder blades are tight on the upper back, so they're kissing, squeezing. Fingers are high, thumbs higher than your bum. Lift your head so you're not looking up, but you're looking out. And then start to rise to your tippy toes. Keeping your breath nice and strong, smooth and deep. And then maybe with your heels up, you can sink into those thighs a little bit more and drop them to the ground. Take one more inhalation. Exhale, heels drop. Inhale, rise up, straighten those legs. Awesome job. Exhale, forward fold, dive it in. Inhale, half a lift. And then exhale, step back, high to low. Good. As soon as you get to down dog, guys, right toes lift to the sky. Inhale. And then exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, lift it up. And then exhale, step it through. Back heel turns down this time. Warrior one. On your inhale, come all the way up. Keep your hips low. Now we're just going to go through it this time. Exhale, hands down. Step back. Take a push up. Inhale up. Exhale down, left side, left toes lift. And then exhale, knee to nose. So I know I switched it up on you guys, right? All of a sudden we're going a little quicker. Back heel spins down, inhale. We just want to get a little bit more heat building here. So exhale, come down when you're ready. Lower through that vinyasa. And then we'll meet up and down back. Here's the thing that we always have to remember and understand is that it's a little bit of a yoga job for you. Whatever maybe that pace that's a little quicker than you want to move, that's the pace. It doesn't have to match mine. It doesn't have to match anyone else. But you want to kind of push yourself into that kind of, oh, it's a little bit faster than I would prefer to move right now, but I can feel myself getting warmer. I can feel the energy moving. Start to look forward. Walk or jump, top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, fold in. Bend the knees, chair pose. Inhale. Take an open arm twist to the right. And then back to your center. Inhale. Exhale to the left. Inhale, center. Look up. Exhale, forward fold. Dive in. One more of those. Inhale, halfway lift. Surya Namaskara, letter B. Exhale, Vinyasa. And then we've got our little lifted leg with a nose tap. Inhale, right toes high. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale it up. Exhale, step through. Inhale to the top of your warrior. Keep your hips low. Exhale, bottom of your push-up. Step back, high to low. Try that much on the left side. Left leg lifts. Bring it towards the nose. Curl and crunch. Inhale, lift. Exhale, step through. Inhale to rise. Exhale to lower. Inhale upward. Exhale downward. Awesome. From there, drop down to the knees. Child's pose. I'm trying to take some powerful breaths here so that we don't lose that heat that we've been building and creating. And the breath is so powerful, it has a sound to it. A sound that almost becomes a, a pillow for the mind to rest on. 
some very comforting sound. So keep breathing with sound, with pressure. And then we're gonna walk those hands out. Start to tuck the toes for high plank pose. So just have a little push up right there. And then you can readjust to make any tiny adjustments that work for you, but see if you can stay nice and steady here. Drawing the front ribs in. So turn on your core, turn on your abdomen. You might have to think about it, right? You're like, I think it's doing something, <laughs> but you really have to turn on that abdomen and maybe squeeze the glutes and tuck your tailbone. So turn on all of those muscles at the center of your body actively. You're paying attention now. Just got about three more breaths here. Already more than halfway done with this plank. Two. Good. And then one, lower down to your elbows for our plank. In any positioning of the hands that feels right for you, but shoulders are going to stay over elbows. And again, turn on your glutes, turn on your low belly, and see if you can keep your breathing nice and steady. Five. Strong legs, pick up those kneecaps. Yes, even if the knees come down, totally fine. But try to squeeze the front sides of your legs. Quads are engaged there too. Awesome, and then on one, let the knees come down. Let your hips lower, come all the way down to the ground. Slide the hands out to the side and then all the way behind you. Go for interlaced fingers, and it can be a loose fist. Palms don't have to touch if it's not comfortable. Slide the inner thighs to touch, and then start to reach that fist, the knuckles back. As you start to take a back in your Shalabhasana variation. Lift your shoulder heads up and away from your mat. And then adding a little bit more intensity, lift your toes. So you should feel your glutes firing here. Try to lift your thigh bones up a little bit more. It's going to activate your hamstrings. And then slide the knuckles back, peel the chest open. Try to stick with it, guys. Two more breaths, holding strong backside. And then from here with your exhale, sink it up and lower it down. Take the hands alongside the ribs, elbows pointing back. Make sure your toes are untucked on the inhale. Roll up to upward facing dog. And then exhale over your toes, downward facing dog. Take the right leg nice and high to the sky. And then exhale, step all the way up. Come into your warrior one, inhale, rise. Good. Once you've set up that warrior one, we're gonna open out to warrior two. So you can take a moment to readjust it, make sure the heels are in line. Left toes are pointing straight off the edge of your mat. Right toes are pointing straight ahead. Keep right knee over your ankle there as you sink down in your hips. And just give a little like tuck to the tailbone. Draw your low belly in. You'll feel a little shift there. Might be subtle, might be dramatic for some of you if you're not used to paying attention to the center of the body and where you're soon. Keep your gaze steady over that front hand. And let's take one inch deeper there. Hold the hips and the legs like that. Let the left hand come down, reach your right arm up, reverse the warrior, big inhale. And even wrap the left arm behind the back. See how that feels. And then exhale from now, let's drop right forward, right elbow to top of right thigh. Unwrap the left arm and reach it out over your left ear. So you're getting nice and long side angle stretch. Putting pressure into the left big toe. Good, and then from there, come back to that reverse warrior, inhale. Now, if some of you want, exhale, can come further down, fingertips to the ground as you take left arm over here. If you want to keep elbow to thigh, keep elbow to thigh. Inhale, reverse it. Exhale, forward. Do that a few more times at your own pace. Inhale, that right knee is still bent. Yes, your quads might be on fire. It's all right, stay low. Try not to come up 
and out of the shape. Not yet. Good. Take one more. Let's meet in that side angle, tilting forward. Good. Everybody look down. Take your left hand to the ground. Lift your right arm up, pivoting on your back toes. Turn that into a twisting lunge. Dragonfly twist. Awesome. Now from there, notice your shoulders right there, kind of, if they're creeping up around your ears, especially the bottom one, try to lower those shoulder blades down the back. And rather than not activating your back leg, really lengthen through your heel. So you're squeezing through the front side of that left thigh. Good. Now keep that energy, try to sink the hips a little lower. Feel your right ribs open a little bit more without letting your left shoulder creep up. Good, look down. Roll onto the outer edge of your back foot. Here's the deal. You can either move this foot halfway back or you can stack it on top of the other. Right, so kicks the other. The point is, is that if you take the knee down, it is a little bit easier, but we still wanna be activating the side obliques there. So either make a kickstand or a stack today. You've probably already been there a while. Shaking, shaking, shaking. Two more breaths, you got it. And then exhale, high plank. Woo! Lower down, Chaturanga. Inhale up. And then exhale, down, left leg goes to the sky. Exhale, step it through. Back heel turns and pivots. You've got warrior one. And then once you're steady, once we're all there, warrior two. So take a moment to readjust. You really want this to open up your hips. A great hip opener, guys, warrior two. So don't miss that opportunity there. But there are a couple things. You've got to really allow yourself to go low. Right, you gotta tuck a little bit as you draw the low belly in. And that's gonna start to challenge the hips in a way. Okay, sink down if you can, arms are out. And then a little bit lower, it feels like one inch down. Drop the back arm, reverse it, inhale. Awesome. And then we're gonna exhale forward and down, first one. You might just kind of explore elbow to knee. Do you reach that right arm out, up, and over your ear? And then the inhale takes you up and back. Now, tendency is, oh, I'm going to straighten that leg. No, go straight, reverse. Exhale, forward and down, maybe fingertips to the ground. Inhale, reverse. You know what to do. Exhale, side angle. Keep those hips dropping low to keep your pelvic floor lifting high. A little bit of opposition there. You gotta think about it. You gotta pay attention, that's the whole point. Inhale, reverse, we're gonna meet in that side angle, hold it down, forward and down. Good. And then once you're there, right hand to the ground, roll onto the ball of your back foot as you lift your left arm, drag and fly. Shoulder blades down the back, strong right thigh. Length through your heel as you sink down in your left hip. Now, the twist happens in the ribs. You bring those right ribs towards the left inner thigh, the left ribs peel open, yet the right shoulder is still open. Good. Look down for your balance. Either go halfway back or all the way back, side plank, Vashisthasana. As you stack, left on top of right, five breaths. Play around with the eyes. You've got about two more looking down, looking up. And then top to bottom of a push up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, upward. Exhale, downward. Awesome job, everybody. Just kind of move the hip side to side in your down dog. You can pedal out for your heels. And then from here, we're going to walk the feet up. Take the feet about hip distance apart. Reach down and try to grab your big toes, okay? So you're going with your peace sign fingers in between first and second toe and then underneath the big toe. You form a little hook. Inhale, lengthen out as best you can. 
And then exhale, let's forward fold and bring it in. Elbows are going to start to fan out to the sides a little bit. And this is where that exercise of noticing the weight in your feet, we did that all the way back at the beginning of class, how the weight can be all the way back in your heels and your bum is sticking way back behind your heels. So if you move the weight forward, notice how the hips start to go over the ankles and you feel maybe a little bit more length through the backs of your legs. Maybe it feels like you're even going deeper into your fold. And then inhale, halfway lift. Let's take the second variation today. Exhale, slide hands, slide palms under feet until the toes touch your wrists. Inhale, take another halfway lift. And then exhale, forward fold and bring it in. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, close the pose, feet together. Step out to the right with your feet. Turn the right toes out, keep your left toes facing the side. So it's just a, about a three foot stance for setting up for Trikonasana, arms out to a T. You're gonna exhale, hinge over your front hip. Maybe some of you will grab that big toe again, some of you will maybe place hand on shin. Whatever works for you, try to stay open. Try to breathe and look up. If you feel like you're forward folding and um, letting your heart round down, try to lift your chest up and peel your left ribs back so this triangle stays open. Good. Put a little bit more push down and into your left foot. Your left big toe is strong. And then everybody look down, soften the right knee. We're going to slide this up and out to half moon. If you have a block or something that you're using, feel free to grab it. Place it under that right hand. Start to lift and kick through your left heel. It's going to be easier if you focus on the ground and see one spot. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, you'll start to look up. Go slow. Try again. Even if you fall out, just come on down. Awesome, everybody look down if you're looking up. Step back, open up to a strong T, and then readjust your feet to go into triangle on the other side. So left toes spin out, right toes are off the edge of the mat, side edge, and then hinge over your left hip, come on down. Whew, that left hip is not happy today. And then find your point of focus. Peel your right ribs up and back, keep it open. And then let's look down. So this is important. You want to keep those eyes focused. Soften the knees. Slide the fingertips out through your kickstand as that strong right leg comes up. Strong right leg. That means you're really kicking, right? It's not like a spaghetti noodle. You got to kick through that heel. Nothing wrong with spaghetti noodles, but when we're trying to balance, you don't want to be doing the, the wavy noodle thing. You want to be strong and engaged. Awesome. Exhale, soften the knee. Step on back, come to your T. And then just one more variation here. You're going to turn to the back of the mat once more, but hands on hips, square it all the way to the back. So now the left toes are at this kind of diagonal. Your right toes are straight off the back edge. Hips are squaring towards the back. Lift your left arm high. And then exhale, start to fold forward. Let it be kind of casual. It doesn't have to be dramatic. Take the hand down inside or outside of your foot. And then when you're ready, right arm is going to open. So now you're in a twisting triangle pose. Earlier on in class, you explored that pyramid shape where the hips needed to be even. It's very, very similar here. Pull your right hip back. 
as you peel your right chest open towards the ceiling, look up. And then let's look down, exhale. Now, if you crisscross that hand, come to the inside of the big toe, look out off the edge of your mat, and then we're coming up to twisting half moon. So you're gonna probably feel it in that right arm. Right arm probably like, please let me come down right about now. So you can just keep it up a little bit longer, guys. Flex through your back foot, kick through your heel. Pull those inner thighs up and in. Let the inseam of your left thigh lift. And then exhale, look down. Awesome job. Open up to the side, strong T. Exhale, hands to the hips as you spin those toes around. Left toes pointing out. Inhale, right arm high. Exhale, casually forward and down. Inside or outside the big toe, palm or fingertips, whatever works for you. And then pull the left hip back, open up your left arm. Stay with that breath, just a little longer there. Pick up the left side of your chest. Peel it back, open it up. And then stay in that twist, keep your belly steady, look down, reach the right fingertips out, and then come on up off of your back foot as you flex and kick through your heel, twisted half moon pose. Breathe in deep, you got it. Just a little bit longer, one more breath. And then exhale, look down. Step out to the side and then step up to the top. Take the feet wide and sink down into your malasana. Get your version of malasana here. Heels might be lifted totally fine. All right, as straight, quote unquote, through the back as you can be. It really just means instead of kind of hunching and rounding, Try to just lift up as your hips sink down as best you can. Don't worry about what it looks like. Is my back straight? Is whatever, right? Just feel a lift. Stay with it. Maybe close your eyes just for the next five breaths. This is a great posture to do, especially if this one's challenging for you guys. Roll up a blanket, put it underneath your heels. Then try to sit in this shape every day. You're gonna open up your hips and open up the lower half, open up the lower back in a really, really good way. So that's always a good tip. Do this with a blanket if you need. It's a really good posture for the body. All right, so a little bit fancy here. What we're gonna do is take the right hand behind you and you've gotta kind of lean back and reach back. So it's like more than a foot back. Slide that right leg out, and then go ahead and push up and off your left heel. Come into this like wild thing posture. So you're on the right hand, right leg is out. Left toes are up, heel is lifted like you had on a stiletto. Reach up and back with that left arm. Good, and then you're gonna let your bum come all the way down. Hips are on the ground. Left knee is still pointing up to the sky. We're going to twist to the left. So take the left fingertips behind you. Wrap the right arm around that shin or knee. Some of you will crisscross the elbow over the thigh. Marie Chiasano, let her see any variation that works for you. Beautiful, and then from there, look to the front. Let the left knee drop out to the side. John use your shots in the letter A. Keep the right leg strong. Do this really mini turn in your chest, and then start to reach out to catch something, the foot, the shin, use a towel or something, and then inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold and bring it in. So you wanna feel that left side 
melting and moving over to the right side. I like this twist. Beautiful, inhale, come on up, and then exhale, release. We're gonna find a boat pose, Navasana. Inhale, lift the shins or those toes all the way up. Breathing through your nose, inner thighs are in. So there is this kind of like abdominal crunch. You don't have to go so much for like a lifted chest, right? You kind of want that rounding and squeezing a little bit. Strong breathing right here, you've got three. Keep those toes up, two. We're gonna take it to half boat, so try to let your heels float and your shoulders stay up, but your low back is now pressing, your low back is down. Tuck your chin, look towards your toes, look towards your feet. Keep rounding and hugging in. Pull the bottom front ribs towards your hips, like you were trying to close that space just a little bit more. Yes, you should be and will be, maybe shaking and trembling, it's okay, three breaths. Two. Awesome job. And then on one, plant your feet. Just tuck those shoulders under. And then push right up to bridge pose. Any variation in the arms that you'd like. And then we're gonna try this. Let your hands go there together, lower down. This is a transition I actually like can't do, but I'm sure a lot of you can do it. <laughs> You're gonna rock and roll into Malasana. So rock and roll right back into that yogi squat. I have to like push myself up with my hand. But however you need to get there, come back into your Malasana and take five deep breaths. Some people can do that. They can just rock right up to Malasana like a little Ninja, it's very impressive. I'm working on it. Keep breathing. And then this time it's your left hand that's gonna go back. So it has to go back pretty far, otherwise it's gonna be awkward. So get it back like more than a foot and then slide your left foot out. Come on up to the tippy toes of that right foot. Arch just a little bit more, push the hips up. Awesome, and then exhale, come on down. You might need to bring the right foot in, but keep the knee pointed up. Keep your left foot flexed, and then rotate around. It's holding on to the knee and the shin feels really nice today. So that's what I'm gonna do. You can crisscross, right, whatever works for you. And then you can start to look forward. Let the knee fall out to the side. Tuck the right heel in. Down your Shirshasana with that little mini twist. Right side bows into that left leg. Awesome, pick up the head, inhale, exhale, let it go. And this time, turn to the side edge of your mat, open up that right leg. Make sure you're high on the sitting bones and then start to walk it out to a forward fold. And then keep trying to roll the hips forward. 
So it almost feels like behind you could lift up off of your sitting bones. You're really feeling that roll forward of the pelvic floor and the pelvic bowl. In a great time, if you take some of these last few closing postures, you might even close your eyes here. Just focus on smoothing out your breath as you near those last few minutes of your practice. Stay with it. The very important part of the practice often skipped. Often sometimes called a cool down. Totally not a cool down. This is still a very important part of the practice. Look for any areas where you're still creating tension for yourself, right? It's just unnecessary. You can let it go if it's in the neck or shoulders. Maybe you can relax deep in the hips somewhere. Just kind of notice where you're, you're still holding on. And you can soften there. And then just casually walk it over to the right foot. Bow head towards knee for a moment there. And then take the right arm on the inside of the right shin and calf. Turn your palm up to the sky, maybe catch your foot. And then reach your left arm up and over. So you're taking a nice side stretching. So peel that left shoulder up and back. Expand through the left side of your chest. You want to grab your toes with your top arm, grab your toes. It does not matter, right? You can keep the arm up, you can even keep it straight up. Just feel from collarbone to collarbone like you're expanding. And then soften everything back and down and walk it over to the other side. First, just reach out and fold over your left leg. And then you can start to take elbow, left forearm inside of thigh. Reach the right arm, you can open it up there. Peel the collarbones open, maybe go for the bind. Try to peek up past your arm. Even if you've got that bind, make sure you can still see the ceiling. So you're opening up and looking up. Awesome, and then exhale, let it go. Start to slowly come up here. Slide the legs together, lie down onto your back. Once you're on your back, give yourself a big hug, bring knees into chest. And then let both of the knees fall over to the right, spinal twist. And then you can let the knees come up. Let them fall over to the left, look to your right. Maybe just allowing the lips to slightly part as you exhale, just as a sign to the body. You don't have to control your breath anymore. You can just let it be really natural. And then we'll come back to the center, set up for Shavasana. 
The legs are gonna slide out nice and long. <sighs> Find an easy, relaxed place for your hands and your arms. And we'll take just a few brief moments here to rest together. So I'll let you know when it's time to get up, to start moving again. For now, all you've got to do is close your eyes, breathe naturally, and allow all of the beautiful benefits of your effort and your practice today to just sink into your muscles, to your bones, sink into your mind, sink into your thoughts as you take rest. And then you can start to wake up your fingers, your toes, maybe take a full deep breath in, a big breath out, whatever helps you get moving today. You want to stay longer in your resting, stay longer in your resting shape, but otherwise you start to take a few more of those stretches and Come on out to a seated position here, whatever's comfortable. And with a lot of gratitude for being able to move today, for taking this whole hour just to consciously breathe, to give yourself this gift. With gratitude, we'll take a nice deep breath in together, inhale, and then exhale, bow forward, sealing your practice, all of your effort. On your inhale, rise up. And then exhale, you can gently let your eyes open. Namaste, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining today. Thanks for um, moving with the time shift. Quick announcement. Um, if you um, are either joining me live or you end up watching this later, if you are interested in, you know, um, continuing to view an online resource of classes, um, please feel free to um, go on Instagram and maybe send me a DM, like a, a direct message on Instagram. It's just John Farshani on Instagram. Um, I'm just trying to gauge, you know, some people said they would be interested in perhaps continuing to do online classes. So we were thinking about um, shifting over to a different resource to continue giving you guys online classes for those of you that are staying home. So 
please let us know and just send me a message, I guess, on Instagram so I can see if there's any kind of interest in that, okay? Um, have a beautiful rest of your day. As always, if you have anything, you can put comments on this video or you can send me direct messages. And um, I hope you guys have a beautiful Friday. I, you know, stay tuned. I think there's yet tonight, I'm not sure. Stay tuned, we'll post um, in the groups if there is or there isn't. And um, that's all I got for you. Have a beautiful rest of your day, bye.